For many city dwellers, the only knowledge of national parks has come from the decades-old cartoon Yogi Bear. Of course, Yogi and Boo Boo Bear lived in Jellystone Park, and the cartoon artists couldn't really capture the scope and grandeur of our national parks. The non-animated truth is our parks are truly wonders of nature. And for a century and a half, the service has given us over 400 massive parks where we can be at one with nature and bring our picnic baskets. I love those bears. Hey, Boo Boo. National parks don't compete for our attention. They draw us with their quiet beauty and grandeur. Of course, the land on which these parks sit had been inhabited by Native Americans for thousands of years. Donna Braden is the curator of public life at the Henry Ford Museum, and she and I found a spot outdoors to talk about national parks and their allure. Which was the first national park and when was it established? The first national park was Yellowstone National Park, not to be confused with the park that starts with a Y in California, that's Yosemite. Yosemite, right. Yellowstone is in Wyoming, and it was established in 1872. Oldest, largest, and one of our most beautiful vacation lands is Yellowstone National Park. For some context, Wyoming became a state 18 years later in 1890. The Transcontinental Railroad was completed in 1869. And despite the railroad being an integral supporter and transporter of passengers to Yellowstone, that branch of the railroad wasn't completed until 1883. What did the public think when they heard National Park, what did that mean to people? At that time, National Park meant pretty much nothing. People were used to maybe local parks or vacation spots that were much closer, but the idea of a national park had no meaning to people at that time. Up until that time, nature was considered something to be civilized, to be conquered by man, cut the trees down, build buildings. Nature was not particularly thought of as something that was for healing. In some ways, the truly curative effects that national parks have on people were a byproduct of their establishment. So what was the purpose of its creation? There were a few reasons. One was that this was kind of close to the Civil War. Seven years after the Seven end of it. Seven years. And people were still not feeling like a unified country yet. It was considered a place of like an escape and an opportunity for us to start over neither north nor south, but west. West. Was there validity to this notion of a national park as a healing influence? People were just starting to think about an open place as a place for healing. So this was a new idea. This was a new idea. It and was innovative. <laughs> we know how much these parks must mean to wildlife, but there's also a very human experience that happens here. Right, that, and that's actually one of my favorite parts of the story because I like nature, but I love history as well. There's also this wonderful system of hotels and restaurants and cabins and, and things that were built through the railroad system. And some of those hotels that were built very early, 1890s, early 1900s, are still there and you can still stay in them. And they're fantastic. They're artifacts of human history. Yep. And maybe they're a place where we can continue to consider our collective humanity.